We are throwing it back, folks. Granted, with new hardware, but the theme is pretty old school. If you've been on this channel for quite a while, you've probably heard of our Walter White series builds. This was what the original Walter White looked like. And in this video, we're gonna rebuild something kind of like that. Now, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. And after we build the system, I'm gonna show you how you can activate your Windows 10 Pro operating system for a little over 10 US dollars using a special promo code that you'll only find in this video. Now, this is obviously a lot of hardware and you would think, uh, hi there. You would think that this would take multiple days to build. It probably will. Uh, but I'm gonna crunch all this into a single video so you don't need to click between videos to see the final product. I used to do that. I'm not a fan of that anymore. Uh, and uh, so you're gonna stick around to the very end of this one to see what this build looks like and then also how you can activate Windows on the cheap, folks. There's no sense in paying retail when you can get a perfectly viable OEM key that will lock to the hardware in question but activate your OS and get rid of that annoying watermark. That's thanks again to VIP ICD key. More on that later. We need to build the system and this here is this this is a, this is a lot of stuff um, I'm being covered by all of it I know it looks a little silly that I'm filming down here but uh, I want to show you the centerpiece of this build first so you guys have seen Hydro X gear from Corsair before you've seen probably at this point uh, the 5000D airflow from Corsair that's this beautiful white case here what you probably haven't seen yet is this N7 B550 motherboard this is finally NZXT's take on an in-series motherboard for AMD. And if you've been sitting on an AMD CPU for a while and dying to buy one of these NZXT motherboards, up until now you've been out of luck because they've only made motherboards for Intel CPUs. Well, finally, we have a B550 chipset in seven board and it looks freaking sexy. This here is the white variant and it's got white shrouds pretty much covering the entire motherboard. This will look so good when paired with our 5000D Airflow in also white. The CPU we're gonna use is a Ryzen 9 5900X Zen 3 processor. These are finally back in stock as of time of filming and they are not overpriced like graphics cards, so they are worth considering. We've got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB memory in, of course, white. And all this other stuff. But enough of the chit chat, let's get to building. Cue the music. things have changed, it tends to be how custom loops go. Uh, I was originally gonna use a Hydro X water block, I ordered the wrong one. That's my fault, not Corsair's. Uh, however, after looking through my uh, custom water cooling inventory, which is not that big, I did have some of these velocity blocks from EK, and uh, I thought these looked really nice. It's kind of like matte black finish here, blends in nicely with the black PCB of the uh, N7 motherboard. And uh, I think I'm gonna go with that. We're probably also gonna use a larger EK reservoir, but I think we'll stick with the dual uh, 360 mil Corsair radiators that I showed you in the beginning. Uh, as for fittings, I'm on the fence between gold compression fittings, which look like this here, and black compression fittings, or, or silver compression fittings. I think silver would look a bit better, but gold stands out more. And depending on what kind of look you're going for, I think either could work. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try both. I would totally pull you guys right now if I could, if this was a live stream, but it's not. So I'm just gonna have to try both and uh, go from there. And the 
so far so good. Now there are a few things you've probably already noticed that I've left out. The graphics card has not even been mentioned yet in this video. And that's because I kind of wanted it to be a surprise. I'm not custom cooling the graphics card, but the card we're using is a colorful iGame RTX 3070 in white. It has a beautiful white shroud. And of course we got to mount it vertically to show it off. Uh, so I had to cut through these rear PCI slot covers with my oscillating tool. I smoothed things out a bit with the Dremel. That way we don't have any you know, things blocking our display out connections back here. Uh, the other thing, I haven't totally decided on where the CPU runs are going to, uh, to run. Yeah, I'm not sure if I wanna cut holes in the top of the case and have the tubes route up, and then we'll just handle some of the tube running behind the build so it would be out of sight. That's more of a minimalistic approach. I also entertain the idea of flipping these upside down, having the tubes run just beside the riser cable that we'll need here. And then the tubes will go down into the basement and then come out here. So one of those tubes needs to run into the reservoir. The other one needs to run into the radiator. And uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough space in the basement because our power supply that we're using, the EVJ 1000 watt, uh, that is a pretty beefy power supply. So I don't think we're going to be able to run the tube straight into the basement. I think the power supply is going to extend that far out. Uh, so I think our best bet is to route things up here and then we'll just kind of have the tubes run behind the motherboard tray and then reconvene over here. I also bought some black rubber grommets. They should arrive today within a few hours. And uh, so when we cut the holes out in our case, we'll just slide those rubber grommets in and then it'll look pretty stock. So this is what things look like without the graphics card installed. You can see this is what the card will look like when it sits vertically in here. All of these whites, I love how the white in the card, the white in the motherboard, and the white in the case pretty much all match. I built a white system before that actually wasn't white. It was a like an eggshell color. It did not look very good, but I'm happy to say that all of these whites look pretty much the same like shade of white, more or less, in lack of a better word there. Um, these aren't you know, like super cool or super warm tones of white. They're all very neutral. And I love that about this build. So we're gonna get this card installed. We're also gonna install that power supply. I'll show you the custom cables as we're installing those. And then the last thing will be uh, to connect the tubes. Remember we're using soft tubing, so it shouldn't take too long. We just have to cut things down to size and uh, we might need to drill a bit. I'll show you the drilling process. I've never done that before. I've never drilled into a case, but I think I have all the necessary bits of the tools that I'll need. And again, those rubber grommets are coming in. And then we'll fill the loop and pray that it does not leak. Well, here she is minus the tube. So that's the last thing we need to do again, apart from filling the loop. And we'll also need to prime this loop. Now I have the radiator turned upside down. So the ports are actually on the bottom here. Uh, my goal is to, again, have as little tubing exposed as possible. Uh, so if we run these up and they might actually kind of turn a bit to the left here because we've got this little zip tie point here. But uh, if we have these go to the left, very small tube exposure here. And then the remaining tube exposure will be in this bottom right hand corner closer to the front of the case. And we'll have two of these tubes run into this basement. So we'll need to cut two holes for these and then two holes up here. And we'll just have those tubes run around the back. There's plenty of room behind this 5000 uh, D-Air flow, which is awesome. And, uh, and then we'll be good to go. So we'll tackle this first tube. I think this is gonna go from the out. Usually you try to have the out port from the pump go straight into the radiator, but uh, I think it's gonna make a little more sense to have this one run straight down and into the basement. So we'll probably have it come from the radiator into the pump here. <laughs>
looking at the debug LEDs down here at the bottom. Everything is turned off, so I think it is finished cycling. And if we had a screen connected, we'd see a post. So let's get the screen up here. And we need to install Windows 10. Remember, this system is pointless. It won't do anything without an operating system. And that's why it's so important to cover the second half of a build log like this is showing how to install the operating system so that you can actually do what you want to do with your build. So we're going to first hop into our motherboard's BIOS. Now I did already switch to XMP 2.0, which is right here. Every UEFI is going to look a bit different, but uh, we definitely want to enable XMP. This is a Ryzen based platform. Zen 3 uh, is going to handle XMP just fine here. Uh, 3200 megahertz a piece that will update when we save and exit. There are a few other things you might want to uh, you know, tweak before we install the operating system. Maybe your fans are just running at full blast right now. Now, you could allow the motherboard to tune the fans by clicking this uh, fan tuning tab here at the bottom, or you could manually configure things uh, by clicking into this folder and uh, setting different parameters for different headers. So I'm gonna save and reset. Now I don't think that we're gonna need to hop back into the BIOS. I think the board will automatically detect the boot device that we have connected to our system. If you wanna know how to set up a proper boot device, you can click this card up here on the top right. But I think it's working. We see that Windows icon. Remember, there's nothing loaded on our uh, Patriot Viper drive. So the only thing that this can technically boot into is the Windows Media Creation tool. So we're gonna click Next here first. We're gonna click Install. Now we don't have a product key yet. We could buy one from our sponsor and enter it here, but I like to go ahead and install the operating system first and then buy the key after. So we're gonna click I don't have a product key. We're gonna select Windows 10 Pro because we know that the key we're gonna buy is compatible with the Windows 10 Pro operating system. Accept the terms. And then we're gonna select Custom Install. Now, from here, we should see the only viable drive connected. There is uh, roughly two gigs of unallocated space. We're gonna click Next. It will create its own partition for this OS and the operating system will begin to install to that drive. All right, looking good. We're gonna select the US. We don't have internet yet. We actually need to install these drivers manually. This uh, B550 board does not come with drivers preloaded. So we're gonna click, I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. I don't care about any of this. This is actually gonna be Lisa's PC, so I will name the system Lisa. No password for now. I like to turn all of these off. I don't care for any of them. I don't care for Cortana either. And Windows is gonna set some things up for us. And cool, so we're on our desktop. It looks empty. This is a fresh install, so there shouldn't be anything uh, pre-installed here. There's no bloatware or anything. Uh, we'll wanna install drivers and things, obviously, but the very first thing I like to do, because I don't wanna deal with a watermark here in the right-hand corner, and it will show up after a few boots, is activate Windows. And that's actually very easy to do through our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Go ahead and click the top link in this video description and then click the Buy Now option. Swing on down here to the promo code section, type in our special offer code just for this video. It's gonna be GSVIP. Go ahead and click Apply and then watch this price right here. It's gonna drop by 30%. Click Submit Order. I like to pay via PayPal. We're gonna purchase our key. And when that payment is finished processing, you're gonna click the User Center button here in green. That'll take us to our order page. You can see I've purchased many keys for many different builds. We're gonna click on the View Keys and Codes button. And then you'll wanna click Get the Key. So this here is our key. And obviously I don't wanna show you guys the entire key. I want this to be uh, valid for my wife's system. Uh, and we're going to enter this exactly as it is uh, on Lisa's system. And when we're here, we'll wanna swing down to the Start tab. We can just type in activate and you'll see activation settings up top there. Click enter. It'll bring us to the activation page and you can see that now that it's updated with servers, Windows is reporting that no product key was found on our device. Easy, we just bought our OEM key. I'm gonna click change product key down here at the bottom. And this is where we'll enter that 25 letter number combination that we just got from VIP SCD key. Ours is entered, now we'll click next. Now you should see this box, you wanna click activate. And there we go, Windows has been activated. You can see it confirmed here in this window as well. This is literally all there is to it and you should have a fully activated system with no watermark, full access to the operating system, no issues from here on out. Now remember that these keys from VIP SDD key are OEM, meaning that they lock to the hardware in your system at time of activation. So if you do change something like a motherboard or a CPU later on, you may need to reactivate. But most folks aren't swapping CPUs every other week, let alone motherboards. And even if you were swapping once or twice a year, you'd still be paying a lot less than retail. So I think the build turned out quite nice. I've got to say the NZXT B550 board in here looks freaking stunning. And I love that the white is very neutral on this shroud. I and mean, there's actually just multiple shrouds, but uh, I love how it matches the white graphics card pretty much spot on. You know, a lot of white components tend to have different shades and maybe warmer, cooler tones to them. But uh, all three, the case, 
the card and the motherboard, all three of those whites working really well together. Now there are a few things I do wanna work out, a few changes I wanna make off camera, uh, just subtle ones, but that'll ultimately like top this off. So uh, right now we're waiting on, I believe a software update in NZXT cam to allow us to change the RGB uh, in the uh, DDR4 there. Uh, so right now we're set to the default kind of rainbow wave effect. And that obviously doesn't match anything at all in the rest of the system. I couldn't find a way to change that in cam, so potential update there. It's just a consequence of a newer, fresher board like this. Uh, also, the white in the CPU block does not match the white in these uh, Corsair fans. The fans actually have more of a neutral white than I'm going for, so this needs to change. And if we can't change it, I'll just turn it off. I think it looks better off than in the current state, but I wanted to leave it on to show you uh, what it looked like in comparison to these RGBs. And the RGBs in these fans actually aren't very bright at all. So there's uh, no extra RGB cable running from each of these fans, which is great. It means less cable management overall. It's just much less of a headache, but they're not very bright as a consequence, um, which I think is okay for a build like this. But uh, the fact that they don't match, just it's, it's driving me nuts. So uh, we'll see if we can tweak that as well. Everything else, for the most part, looking pretty good, working fairly well, very quiet as is, especially at idle. So I wanna thank again today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Be sure to click the top link in this video description to get your Windows 10 Pro OEM key for just over 10 US dollars using our special promo code, which is also in the description. Uh, we work with them quite a bit. And one of the big reasons why uh, is because most of our viewers build PCs or have built a PC in the past. Uh, and I like to save folks money. At the end of the day, that's, that's really how this channel started and it's a relevant topic still in 2021, especially in 2021 with how tight finances are for so many. The difference between a $120 retail key and a $10 OEM key is massive. And the only real difference between the two is that the OEM key will again, lock to the hardware in your system at the time of activation. If you don't plan to upgrade anything in your system for a year or two, you shouldn't have problems with that key for a year or two, right? And I think that, that trade-off is more than worth the $100 Delta. So if you're building a system, consider them. Thanks again for the support in this one. Hope you guys liked watching this thing being built. I haven't built too many custom loops as of late, but that's just because I, I feel like a lot of my audience isn't interested in them. Uh, they are extremely expensive for the most part. The cooling differences, I mean, aside from adding multiple radiators, which we haven't done here, just because I think it's a bit overkill, um, isn't all that substantial. Man, this is not gonna vary much from uh, a single 360 mil AIO, for example. We only have a 360 mil rad in here. Yeah, the pump is a lot stronger. Yeah, we have more fluid, so it will take a lot longer to heat soak uh, naturally, but at the end of the day, cooling in the long run isn't much different. Um, the main difference in this case is the aesthetic play, the looks of this build. And I think that the cuts that we made into the build, uh, the little custom aspects we've done to it have really sealed the de deal here. I, I think that uh, considering this is a, a soft tubing custom loop, it looks pretty darn good. What do you guys think in the comments below? Be sure to let me know. You can find all the parts we threw into this build down below as well, with a few exceptions. Good luck finding an RTX 3070 and MSRP. I understand graphics cards at this point in time are extremely difficult to find anywhere near MSRP. So good luck with that one. If you're patient, I mean, that, that's actually gonna work in your best interest, I think, with, with graphics cards anyway. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to spend two or three times MSRP for a card now that you don't necessarily need. I mean, let's be honest, how many people truly need a new graphics card? You might want one really, really bad, but it's not a, it's, it's, you know, it's not gonna be the end of the world if you uh, try to, you know, stretch that 780 Ti or that GTX 1070 or that RX 580 for another year or two, um, especially when it can save you hundreds of dollars, right? Don't let your lack of patience get the best of your wallet. So that's the one exception, but everything else for the most part, you can probably find at or near MSRP. And uh, if you wanna check out the Cor Corsair Hydro X gear that we used as well, that will be linked in a separate uh, part of this video description. With that, uh, again, comments, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg, thanks for building with me.